How do we talk about people who come from other countries but live in our country? And does the way we talk about and see such people change if and when they become citizens? Let's take a look at two countries that accept a significant number of immigrants each year. Though these immigrants may be different due to differences in policy, labor market, and geography. These two countries are Germany and Canada. Germany says that 21% of its population has what it calls migration background. Canada says that 20.6% of its population are immigrants. But we know, based on statistics, that Canada has a higher rate of immigration than Germany. This means that these countries cannot possibly be talking about the same thing. So what are they talking about? In Canada, you can become a citizen in one of three ways. First, you were born in Canada. Second, your mother or father is a Canadian citizen and applies on your behalf. Third, you have come to Canada on a visa or as a refugee, have fulfilled the requirements for becoming a citizen and have passed a test. This is called naturalization. Given these three ways of becoming a citizen, Using the word immigrant in Canada is almost the same thing as saying this person was born abroad. And this is roughly this 20.6%. But it is also possible in Canada to talk about immigrants as Canadians once they become citizens. It's confusing, we know. What you need to remember about Canada is that being born abroad pretty much makes you an immigrant but people may call you and see you as something else, namely Canadian. Because most immigrants become citizens when they are able to, and in Canada, citizenship is key. In Germany, you can become a citizen in one of two ways. First, your mother or father is a German citizen and applies on your behalf. Second, you become a citizen through naturalization, whether on your own or through your parents. You'll note that being born in Germany doesn't automatically make you a citizen. And though you can naturalize and legally become German in Germany, you may still be referred to by your migration background, first and foremost, even if you were born here. This means that people in Germany may not talk about you and see you as they do other Germans, even if and when you become a citizen. This is especially true for people who do not look traditionally German. You can see that migration background is a way for Germans to talk about both citizens and non-citizens in the country with roots elsewhere. These roots can go as deep as the third generation. For example, you have migration background in Germany if at least one parent is not a German citizen, or if you are an asylum seeker or refugee, or if you are living in the country on a work visa. This means that someone who was born and raised in Germany, say a lawyer whose father immigrated to Germany from Turkey as a young man, could be described in the same way as a refugee, say a boy, who arrived in Germany one year ago from Syria. Therefore, the term migration background is kind of a catch-all, and everyone in this category makes up this 21%. Talking about people from somewhere else in a multi-generational way is not just a German thing. The Netherlands also uses a version of this term migration background, for example. But some European countries have an even less specific way to talk about immigrants. Italy, for instance, does not really have a word like migration background to talk about foreigners who live in the country permanently. Hmm. Ultimately, we can see that talking about people from somewhere else in one country is not the same thing as talking about people from somewhere else in another country. And this also means that talking about we the Germans and we the Canadians is not the same thing. The difference between the two can depend on whether or not becoming a citizen makes you a part of the we, and whether or not citizenship is even an option. And in the end, this might all depend on whether or not people recognize that such rules exist in their own country, rules that we, the people, make. Comparing the way Germany and Canada talk about people from somewhere else in their countries can be a bit like comparing apples to oranges. And being able to differentiate one fruit from another is essential to understanding migration in comparative perspective. 